Hey and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about decluttering and minimalism. Things that have worked and haven't worked for me during these past few years of decluttering my entire house. Hey, welcome to the suburbs. I'm Clarissa. Join me on my journey as a housewife, mom, homemaker, and homeschooler. Where it's always sunny in the suburbs. So as you saw from the intro, if you are new, I talk about homemaking, cleaning, organizing, productivity, um, just pretty much anything, homemaking, motherhood, and also I touch on homeschooling. I'm going to be doing a lot more homeschooling videos though. I'm going to try to really incorporate homeschooling a little bit more in my channel. But anyways, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe if you like content like that. And also don't forget to like this video. Also, before we start, I want to mention this is a collab hosted by my sweet friend Joy from Organize with Joy. She has been such an inspiration when it comes to decluttering, cleaning, organizing. So don't forget to head over to her channel. Her channel link is in my description along with the declutter and minimalism playlist. So if you need more motivation, there'll be a playlist with tons of motivation for you. For this video, I'm going to be going through some tips and things that didn't work for me during this whole decluttering process. So I'm going to do this intro pretty quickly, but backstory, I obviously haven't been doing YouTube this whole time. Off camera, I have been decluttering my home for many, many years. And um, coming from somebody who not, doesn't just hoard things, um, I tend to, over shop I have a shopping issue <laughs> and it's not saying that I have all this money to spend on things or anything like that but I've noticed over the years I brought in a lot of things that we just didn't need I'm not going to say that we are minimalist um, because we are definitely not complete minimalist we don't have as many things as a lot of families do so we are a family of five that being said we're gonna start off with the first tip and I've talked about this tip before but that is to plan before you start decluttering. I've had regrets on decluttering and that kind of stemmed back from not really having a plan. Um, and that is something you really need to do. So obviously by watching these kind of videos, watching ins inspiring videos, watching other people who declutter professionals and things like that and getting those tips and applying them to your decluttering process. Because if you just jump on in and start getting rid of things without a plan, it's gonna really just start falling apart and you may not stick to it. Um, you may have regrets. One way that helped me to kind of get out of this um, and not make the same mistakes in the past was visualizing my space and meaning by what do I want my kitchen to look like? What do I want my drawers and cabinets to look like? When I open a cabinet, what do I wanna see? What is my decorating style? What do I want my living room to look like? And surprisingly, I'm still actually trying to fill spaces up in my home. So I do wanna throw that out there. I've got rid of so much stuff to the point where even I need to fill spaces up because we have empty walls and we have just empty spaces that are just not getting used so that is when i when i mean i've got rid of a lot of stuff i really have so just kind of visualizing what you want those spaces to look like and then going from there and that is something i think is really important when it comes to making a plan and sticking to it um, instead of just jumping in and just starting to declutter my second tip is to incorporate your family members in your decluttering process. This can go both ways if you are um, decluttering with your husband, with your kids, and I wanna mention this because this kind of coincides with regrets um, or not making a plan, and then on top of that, getting rid of things that maybe other people didn't wanna get rid of in the, in the home. What I mean by incorporating them is don't declutter stuff that's not yours. And I mean this like in the sense for, for instance, my husband. Um, I always try to incorporate him and in what I got rid of obviously after the fact like he's not sitting there like watching me declutter but I get rid of some stuff and sometimes he'll kind of go through what I got rid of just in case um there was a point one time where I was decluttering the kitchen I bought some new uh, measuring cup and I got rid of some old measuring cups that just did that were pretty old and then my husband let me know that those were some of his grandmother's measuring cups which I had no idea so I ended up taking it out of the donation and giving it to my daughter for her kitchen um, and so it's things like that where making sure that you're not getting rid of things that aren't necessarily yours. And then same for children, incorporating your kids. And obviously you're really young kids, you can't always incorporate them. But your older kids that can declutter with you, include them in the process. Include them in what you're decluttering. 
and um, this is so important. It also teaches them not to be a hoarder, not to hold on to things that they're not using, help you to not get rid of things that maybe they do use and you didn't realize it. Um, this was other examples is that there was stuff that I thought was broken and pieces I'm like, okay, I think this toy is broken. I, I don't know what this piece goes to, who knows, and I was throwing it uh, throwing it away, throwing in a donation. And then my older son was like, hey, like that goes to this toy. And um, I was looking for that piece. If I would have thrown away some of their, their toys, like the pieces that look like they were broken, then they would have been like, hey, I was looking for that piece. And then I was like, I threw it away. So I just want to mention that that is one tip that I really cannot stress enough is to incorporate everyone in your process of decluttering. So next tip is not to go in and declutter an entire space. Take it from me. I talked about this in my actually in my last video, and I don't know why it took me so many years to realize this, but you cannot go into a space. I mean, maybe you can, you know what? I can't speak for everyone, but the majority of us cannot go into a space and just declutter it, the entire space, and go to the next space and declutter. You can't declutter your whole house overnight. That is something that I tend to do, is I'm like, I gotta declutter my whole kitchen. I want um, this room to look good. So I'm going to declutter this whole room, this whole closet, whatever. And then I end up giving up or I end up not doing it because I start procrastinating because then my kids needed me and you know, and it just goes on and on. So instead of going into a space and telling yourself, I'm going to declutter my whole kitchen, I'm decluttering the whole closet, obviously decluttering those spaces and being done with those spaces is the ending goal, but you can't go into it like that. Most of us have lives. Most of us have kids. We, if we don't work, we do work. It, it just, there's so many things that are going on in everyone's lives. Going into a space in that mindset, you will risk not finishing the task. So instead is going into it in small goals. So maybe one day you're going to get rid of the junk drawer, declutter it, clean it, organize it, and you're done with that, that project. So going into it with little, little projects. Maybe you're going to just declutter socks today. Maybe you're going to declutter your underwear drawer. <laughs> Maybe you're going to declutter just your pajamas. Um, maybe just one of your children's rooms with their toys. Like you get what I'm saying. Going into the space and decluttering small areas instead of the entire area, because then you've accomplished one project. Then you can be like, I'm going to go on to the next project. Maybe you have time to do some more stuff. Going into that mindset, it will help you tremendously. I don't know why it took me so long to realize this. Um, I don't know, I'm not really sure. And like I said, it has really helped me out. The next tip I have is kind of a, a weird one, but I wanted to throw this one out there because I don't really ever see this one um, talked about, but just because you're decluttering and becoming a minimalist or just getting rid of things, doesn't mean you can't shop. This is coming from somebody who just loves to go and look at things and go through Amazon and stuff like that. I think that when we're decluttering and going through this process, we get into this mindset that we aren't gonna be able to buy stuff. Like the point of it is to get rid of things and not to go and buy more things. When you shop, you're gonna kind of get into the point where once you get rid of stuff, you are gonna be more intentional. And this is what I mean. Be more intentional about the stuff that you bring into your home. And this all kind of coincides with all of the tips I've already, um, I have been talking about. This is what I mean. Recently, I've been trying to trade out our plates and bowls and just kind of having a more aesthetic looking cabinet, basically. When I open it, I would like to see everything, for the most part, organized, um, same color, and so on. So that's something I want. Um, in order for me to get to that point, I need to shop for those items. I'm also shopping intentionally and I'm not just going and buying stuff. I'm buying good quality stuff. It's quality over quantity. Just because you're a minimalist does not mean you can't shop. It's just being more intentional about the things you shop for. And this kind of helped me out because I do like to go and get things. I do like to look at stuff. And basically, moral of the story is just being more intentional about what you're bringing into your home and tell yourself that just because you're decluttering, it doesn't mean you're never gonna buy stuff. And my next tip is to put everything in a box that you cannot see or a trash bag. So I've seen this tip before and I wanna mention it just in case you haven't seen it, but when you are decluttering, put things in a box, put things in a trash bag, and you cannot see the stuff and just get rid of it. Just just get it, get it out of your house. Don't linger on, don't leave your stuff there. And that's something I 
tend to do a lot of is just kind of putting my things to the side. I got rid of it and then it just stays there. Or the box is open so people can see what's in there. My kids can see, oh, now they now they want the stuff back. Um, and maybe now I'm like, you know what, why did I get, you know, you get it. So then you start taking that stuff out. Do not do that. Get rid of, just put it in a box. You can't see it, put it to the side. Um, I know some cities, Salvation Army will come and pick up the stuff. So maybe scheduling a, day, a donation day for them to come pick it up if it's too much for you to go and drop it off. Um, or just that weekend, just get it out of your house. And I wanted to mention this because I've fallen into is not getting rid of the stuff and then it just stays in my house. And then it's like, why did I declutter everything? Because then it just ended up coming back and now it's in a space that is it, now it's just all over the place. So my last tip for you guys is to consider Swedish death cleaning. So this is actually a new concept to me, surprisingly. I know this has been kind of a thing for years, but I don't know why I just never heard of it. I have no idea, but Swedish death cleaning is a really awesome mindset. I guess it's more of a mindset. Okay, everyone declutters, they put things in piles. So we got our piles going. We got our keep pile, our maybe pile sometimes, donation throw away that's usually how i how i go with it it's like four piles for me now you got your piles you're decluttering things you're getting rid of stuff but also incorporating that mindset so if you haven't heard what swedish death cleaning is it's basically not leaving a, leaving behind junk for your family but if you passed away tomorrow is it going to be a burden for your family to come into your home and start decluttering your stuff and kind of giving yourself that mindset so when you are in that process, you got your piles going and you're decluttering, now it's time to put that into place. And that would be really great for your maybe and keep piles, obviously, because your throw away, your throw away and donation, you've already, you've already made the decision. But maybe when it comes to your maybe piles, um, will this benefit, will anyone want this stuff when you pass away or if you pass away tomorrow? And it, again, it's a morbid way to think and I don't like to think negatively, but we also are living in our world. So like I said, a morbid way to think, but kind of telling yourself that when you are making decisions. And I think that would be really helpful for a lot of people. It helped me out. I never really thought of it that way. And again, I never really wanted to think of it that way because it's like a sad way to think, but then it actually did help me to get rid of more things. Cause I'm like, you know what? I don't think that someone would want this job basically. So I hope you guys enjoyed those tips. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much. I'm so glad you have stuck around for this journey. Don't forget to like this video and comment down below if you have any more tips for decluttering. I love to hear your tips. I love to talk to you guys. I hope this did kickstart your decluttering process. If you are ready, just start now. If you're watching this video, just, just go start now. Don't procrastinate anymore, just get it done get the decluttering done. I think I'm going to go declutter some more stuff right now, actually. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Woke up early just to see the sun.